when is the value of cryptocurrency and what is its role in blockchain technology is cryptocurrency just a useless speculative asset and its price is driven only by greediness hi my name is Oleksiy Konashevich perhaps you think I'm going to praise cryptocurrency repeating again and again these words you've heard many times decentralization disruption and blah 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 no I'm not but in this video I'm going to bust the myth that with uh, blockchain you can create useful applications and you have nothing to do with cryptocurrency I've heard many times how people discuss application of blockchain in the business and the public sector and there is a widespread fallacy that we can use blockchain and not deal with cryptocurrency and this is a misconception because blockchain cannot exist without cryptocurrency and let me explain you why over a decade we can observe discussions among enthusiasts philosophers economists and politicians and software engineers of what cryptocurrency is and i'm not going to repeat something that you probably heard hundreds of times but to address so-called dark side of cryptocurrency i want to say that it is a speculative statement that cryptocurrency is bad because it is used for illegal and fraudulent payments uh, first of all crypto is a tool and it's like a hammer you can build a house with it but you can you can harm you can do harm as well and you don't prohibit tools we create rules for a civilized use of them we chase and prosecute criminals and indiscriminate prohibition of cryptocurrency is not a solution the problem requires a relevant response restrictions and bans are okay only for authoritarian anti-democratic countries for democracies with free markets we need an, another solution to close this issue i have to say that cryptocurrency regulation is a whole topic for discussion and surely we will touch on that in other videos but meanwhile let me explain something that you probably haven't heard about cryptocurrency and its role and value in blockchain first of all uh, in the previous video i explained why not every chain of blocks is a blockchain to refer to a wide range of technologies that deal with distributed ledgers there is a more appropriate name for that distributed ledger technology which includes a lot of centralized variations of ledgers private permissioned enterprise federated and so on the distinguishing feature of the blockchain is that it can achieve an unprecedented level of safety and integrity of records no other technology in the world can create that credibility to transaction records as the blockchain can but let's figure out why it is happening the mechanism to this is competition free open and unconditional possibility to anyone to add their computational resources to a blockchain network and compete for cryptocurrency reward when your machine solves so-called mathematical problem and presents a valid solution to the network so you close the block of transactions and write your reward in it coins cryptocurrency due to this mechanism the blockchain network is an ecosystem with no authorities or third parties that facilitate its work it's a self-organized infrastructure of independent computers all over the world on the contrary permissioned systems rely highly on their members network authorities if you wish and they are predefined such nodes surely are more exposed to the whole variety of cyber threats answering the question what model can provide more safety to your data a handful of members in a permission dlt network or thousands of anonymous nodes around the world 
Well, I think the answer is obvious, even not for an expert. It's extremely hard to succeed in an attack when you don't even know whom you have to attack. And I'm not talking about the scale of such an attack that you need. Look at this website, 51% uh, attack cost, that shows, for example, that attack on Bitcoin network will cost you at least $2 million per hour. And there is no guarantee for a success. And it's not a theoretical discussion. It's a fact. There are no precedents of the ledger being compromised, say, in Bitcoin. Of course, such a level of immutability is not a given. The network needs to go all the way through the development and growth of its community to get to this point. And we saw many examples of hacked blockchain networks that have never achieved their mission and went into oblivion. But you as a consumer have a choice in quite a range of networks that have proven to be stable and reliable. Bitcoin and Ethereum are surely on this list, like dozens of others. If some problems happen occasionally, problems happen with any technology. They have an advantage. Their communities are well organized to tackle any issues. And here comes the meaning of the price of cryptocurrency. As cryptocurrency is so fundamentally important in all this, it's a driving gears of transactions. Users pay fees to miners for their transactions to be included in blockchains. Fees are not mandated in many blockchains, but it's a free market. Uh, it's a mechanism of demand and supply. A transaction without a fee will probably include it in Bitcoin, but you will have to wait a lot while some miners decide to include it in a block. But those transactions contain fees, and as the reward becomes higher for a miner, the higher chances that the transaction, your transactions, will get a higher priority in the queue of transactions to be included in the earliest block. But to be clear, this is just the tip of the iceberg, as the value of cryptocurrency is crucial for all blockchain applications beyond cryptocurrency itself. So I mentioned the issue of uh, blockchain versus cryptocurrency. Many people have heard about applications of blockchain, for example, for developing public and commercial services. And they got, some of them get, got an impression that blockchain can exist without crypto and can be separately applied. But there are so many misconceptions and to address them, I have to distinguish two things. First, there is blockchain technology. Cryptocurrency is an inextractable element of blockchain. There is another technology, a family of distributed ledger technologies that also create chains of blocks, but they don't have cryptocurrency and they are not blockchains in its initial meaning of being decentralized and open and competitive ecosystems. Permission DLTs cannot ensure immutability of records as the safety of such ledgers rely on a limited number of nodes that control the network. Practically, they can even rewrite the ledger if they want to, which is fundamentally different from what Satoshi Nakamoto presented to the world more than a decade ago. So when you hear the idea that blockchain can be used beyond cryptocurrency, it means that the blockchain can be used for various applications which are not financial applications, but the trick is that, that you will still need cryptocurrency. Let me explain you this phenomenon. Blockchain was designed as a system of decentralized digital cash. It was an initial purpose, but from the very first block ever created, there was an undeclared possibility in this technology. It can store arbitrary data not just transactions. Users and miners creating transactions and blocks can insert small chunks of data into the blockchain. The first block of Bitcoin contains a short message with the title of an article in uh, the New York Times. You see it on, on your screen. 
beyond its symbolic meaning, as Bitcoin was a response to the world economic crisis in which banks lost their credibility, there is a very practical meaning to this message. This record plays the role of proof of life because of the reference to the newspaper proof that the Genesis blog existed by the day the news issue. So we know the day when the first blockchain appeared. If the creators didn't do this, anyone could say they could put any timestamp in the Genesis blog because it's very easy to change date and time in a computer. Throughout the first years, users published more and more arbitrary data uh, in blockchain messages, pictures, code of programs, and so on and so on. But then came an understanding of great importance to all this. Blockchain is a reliable public repository that can ensure an unprecedented level of safety and integrity of the data. The blockchain is a credible timestamping machine because once the user's data is inserted in, uh, in there, it cannot be altered, providing quite an accurate timestamp, for example, within 10 minutes in Bitcoin. The simplest illustration of the useful application of blockchain would be publishing a hash sum of a document. Say two parties agreed to the terms and conditions of their contract. As a proof of its acceptance, they can publish a hash sum of this file in the blockchain. So then Anyone having the file can prove that it still contains the original text of their agreement with no changes even years and years after. This unique combination of an unchangeable repository of data and timestamps comes with cryptocurrency because you have to commit a transaction with cryptocurrency in order to insert data. The user attaches data, a message, to a coin spending transactions. There are various methods and technologies of publishing data in blockchain and we are not going to uh, touch on that as it's not important for this level of discussion. But what I'm trying to say is that the useful application of blockchain is derived from cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is the blood of the system as red cells uh, coins deliver useful elements between parts of the system. Even if you think about Ethereum, at its bottom you still see cryptocurrency either. And the users have to spend coins, these coins, to deploy a smart contract. The smart contract is an executable code of a user's program that is published on blockchain with a coin spending transaction. And then cryptocurrency is needed again to run the smart contract if it has a continuous use. The role of cryptocurrency is so evident in this equation of blockchain applications, but sometimes people so much underestimate its, its relevance, its, its importance by so-called alternative vision of, of blockchain. You can create nowadays uh, applications using the whole variety of technologies, uh, classical client-server systems with APIs, DLTs with its whole variety, permission, private, federated, enterprise, blah, 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 and blockchains. But if you need a decentralized application that relies on credible repository, ensuring that data will not be compromised, ensuring the integrity of data, you need a blockchain. But all these features are possible only if the blockchain has a decentralized consensus protocol and open competition in mining well, or staking or minting or forging, doesn't matter, which in its turn is possible only by having cryptocurrency in its basis. So credible decentralized applications can be built only in a blockchain with cryptocurrency. All other technologies are reliable only to the extent of reliability of those who control the system. That's it for today. In the future, we will discuss use cases for permissioned and private DLTs as well, as it's useful technology and it has its applicability.
If you like the video, hit like and subscribe. See you.